To put it bluntly, the new Darkness Ablaze theme decks aren't good. For starters, they used cards from Robo Clash as the leaders of the deck. The Galarian Surfetched was originally printed in Robo Clash, but they reprinted it in Darkness Ablaze, the exact same attack. And this is the one from Rebel Clash, and this is the one from Darkness Ablaze. So you do 40 damage for a fighting energy, and then for a fighting energy and two colorless, you do 180. But this Pokemon can't use Meteor Assault again until it leaves the active spot. So you do play a couple ways to get around that. You play two switch. That is it. And two bird keeper. That is it. There is no float stone or anything like that. Or I guess I should say air balloon. I'm so used to, I've been playing expanded a little bit too much. So I'm used to seeing float stones everywhere. So that's the first issue I have with the deck is that they use something from a previous set to lead a theme deck from the current set. But second of all, the energy acceleration in this deck isn't great. And the attack cost of something like stone journer and hip, hip hop, hip out on are really high. The Stone Journer, for 4 energy, it does 120 damage, but if you have 5 energy attached to it, it does 60 more damage, so you can do 180. That isn't amazing. You're probably just going to use Mega Kick if you have to use something. And then where's the Hapowdon? Where can I get it? There it goes. Triple Smash, flip 3 coins. You can do 240 damage. You're not going to as often as you'd like, but for 3 energy, you can pretty much guess that you're going to do at least 80, so I mean, it's okay, but... Getting it powered up just isn't easy. You know, Turbo Patch, there's two copies of it. Flip a coin, if heads, attach a basic energy from your discard to one of your basic Pokemon that isn't a GX. That would be great if there were four of them in the deck, but there's only two and it's a coin flip, so that's just a toss up. There's also Bidet, uh, it's your supporter for turn. Attach a basic energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. That's fine when you're all set up, but if you start, say, a where, let's get, I, I've started Diglett, just the only Pokemon in the last two games, I've started Diglett, and that's it, and then I had a Bidet, and it's useless. You know, you want Bird Keeper, or Hop, or Research, or Sonya, you want something other than BD at the beginning. It's great at the end, when you're set up, but at the beginning, it is completely useless. And the other supporters in the deck aren't great. Bird Keeper is switch your active with the bench Pokemon. So if you only have one Pokemon, you can't use Bird Keeper. That's also really bad. Hop is just your standard draw three. Sonia, you either get two bench Pokemon or two energy. That's okay, I guess. I mean, it can help you out of a tough situation. And Research is usually a great supporter. You just discard your hand and draw seven. But the deck doesn't play Ordinary Rod. So if you have to ditch, say, a Surfetched early, and you prize another Surfetched, you might only have one Surfetched the entire game, and that's just horrible. You know, this deck needs an Ordinary Rod. But even with all of the issues I have, this is far from the worst theme deck ever made. The Passimian puts Pokemon on your bench. The Doug Trio with Dig, flip a coin, if heads during your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage from and effects of attacks done to this Pokemon. So it can protect itself turn after turn, and the Surfetch can deal a lot of damage. This deck is nowhere near as good as the best Sun and Moon theme decks that I'll be covering soon, but let's see how this deck does today. And it's a mirror match, okay. I don't know if you want to go first or second, but I think going second is probably the safe bet. Just because you can use Passimian or Sudowoodo, and you can use a supporter if you have one, but nope. And this is the problem with playing 18 energy, is there's a really good chance you get a lot of energy. And neither of these are good starters, but I guess I'll go with Diglett. Sure, let's go with Diglett and just say they ain't got it like that. And I'm not going to use research because this is this is a prime scenario where ordinary rod would make the most sense. Oh, that's not good. They okay, so they can't knock it out. That's fine. So I'm just going to rely on Dark Trio. I do need to get an energy pretty soon. But th this is a situation where I would really love to research, but there's no ordinary rod, so I'd lose a Dark Trio and Hippowdon, and that would be it. So I have to use Hop. And there's an energy. Cool. And looks like I'm going to be using research next turn. I guess I could use Bidet, but I mean, I think I might have to. Alternatively, if they don't evolve their Farfetch'd into a Surfetch'd, I can knock it out with Doug Trio. They're just going to use Pierce, it looks like. So yeah, if they don't evolve or do anything, I'm in a great position. And there's Sonya. I 
you know, I know Sonya has seen some play in standard, but I really wish it was better. I wish it was a combination because you can get two basics or two energy. It can't be a combination. I really wish it was just a combination. Okay, so they just used Pierce. Our trio is really weak, but this might just be the end of the game here, which is kind of funny. So I will Mud Bomb. I will... Sure, let's do that. I guess I should use BD. There we go. Yeah, so that's that's how theme goes sometimes. You just win the game after you knock out a Pokemon. You know, there just really isn't a lot of comeback potential in these decks. You either manually attach or you have to rely on Turbo Patch, and Turbo Patch is a coin flip, and I don't like it. Let's go to game two. And I'm facing off against uh, I don't I don't think I can remember what this one is called. It, it, wait, it's Rocksteady, right? It's Rocksteady? Yeah, Rocksteady, the developers of the Batman games. Um, actually, I think I want to call for family. So this is the perfect start for this deck. You want to start either Passimian, call for family, put two basics on your bench. Oh, I remember this deck. I remember this deck well. It was, I think, Hidden Moon was the Lunala theme deck, and that was the number one deck when I first started. And then Clanging Thunder came out, and the Hydragon came out, and those kind of replaced it. So this is pretty good. I don't think they play anything to disrupt my hand, right? Okay, so Rock Curl. Maybe I should have started Pseudo Wudo because they can put some damage on it, but I think I'll be okay. There we go, and I will call for family. I will go get a Hippopotas and probably a Diglett. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know if I want to put any more energy on the Pissimian, because it only does 70 damage. So what I might do is, I mean, yeah, maybe now that I'm thinking about it, I think maybe Sudowoodo is always the better choice over Pissimian if you have the option. Just because Sudowoodo, yes, it only draws you two cards, but it can attack. This is, oh, jeez. The Farfetch'd, I think, should go down. I think that should go down. That should go down. And the Lucario, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, let's call for family. Sure, why not? Let's go get... A uh, stone Jr. can probably buy me a turn later, but you know, I'm just going to put another Diglett down there. If I recall correctly, the Lucario, when it evolves, it can't be damaged, so it protects itself for a turn. And I think I'm just laying back and trying to take this win. So yeah, with Stance, when you play this from your hand, you may prevent all effects of your opponent's attacks, including damage. So I can't do anything to it next turn, so I think I might just send out a Diglett and let it get knocked out, and then I will use Surfetched Meteor Assault. And that is really good. So I can actually use Meteor Assault right now, but I don't want to do that. So I think I just build up the Hippowdon and pass. So this is kind of what happens, you know, what you'll notice with theme decks is that they get better as the generation moves on. You know, we're still in the first year of Sword and Shield cards, so the decks aren't great. And you're kind of seeing that right here. Okay, so I will attach Meteor Assault, and then next turn I will research. So my draws have been really good. You're not going to see this nearly as often as you'd like. But what I'll do is I'll retreat into somebody that only has a one energy attack cost or one energy retreat cost. So I'll switch retreat and that gets rid of the meteor assault, the the bad part of it. And I think this plays Rhyperior, right? At least one copy, and that discards the top of your deck. It's been a while since I've seen Rocksteady because no one really plays it. If you're buying a theme deck, the you want to go towards the end of Sun and Moon. Okay. So I'll just do that. I will retreat. And does anybody else deserve a bench spot? I guess Sudowoodo, and then I'll research. 
So when you're drawing this well, winds come easy. And I think I just do that. And meteor salt. So this is kind of whoa, they have they've taken two prizes? What's going on? And there's a Doug Trio, so I think it might not be the worst idea to just ditch the Surfetched and be like, I'm probably not going to use you again. But if they evolve into Lucario right here, then I guess it doesn't really matter. And they're going for the Rescue Stretcher, so the Lucario might be making a comeback. That does not scare me in the slightest. There's Lycanroc. Okay, so... Can I knock it out this turn? I mean, if I if I flip uh, 70, actually, yeah, I just need to flip one heads on Turbo Patch. And I can knock it out with our trio. Let's see if I can flip another heads. Hey, when everything goes perfectly, this deck is amazing. So I think I put it on the Stone Journer. Then I do that. I retreat into the Diglett and take the knockout with Doug Trio. I don't think it's being greedy. Then again, you know, that's got 110, that's got 90, but they're not they're not pressuring me. You know, with a lot of the theme decks, like at the beginning of Sun and Moon and at the beginning of Sword and Shield, you just have to watch their energy. You know, yes, this deck and the Darmanitan one play Turbo Patch and BB, but I mean, there there's only two Turbo Patch and two BB. And BD only goes to the bench and Turbo Patch is a coin flip. So just watch your opponent's energy. Target down what has the most energy. And once you get rid of that, it should be smooth sailing. But let's see what happens in game three. Let's see if we can get a newer deck. And here we go against Relentless Flame. This will be a test. For starters, the Farfetch'd resists fighting, if I recall correctly. And nothing on their side of the field is weak to fighting. And the Rapidash can survive turn after turn, and the Charizard can accelerate energy, and the Nidoqueen Queen can just get you Pokemon. So this is just going to be a great matchup. I think I want to go second. I'm probably going to start like Diglett, and it'll be the worst thing ever, but... No, okay. This still is a horrible hand, but you're going to see why Relentless Flame is so good in a second, I think. Even if they, even if they just start a Farfetch, they will be totally fine. And they started a Charmander. Okay. There's not a whole lot I can do to knock it out. And double Great Ball. So let's go for Evolutions if I can, because I'm just going to put Basics on the bench. Or I could go for Pseudo Wudo. It's a tough call. I think Pseudo Wudo is good in certain situations, but it could just draw me like two energy, and then that was completely useless. So I'll get the hip out on. I'm just getting evolutions because I'm putting basics on my bench. So I'll go get Diglett and probably Farfetch'd. And then I guess next turn it'll be... I don't even know what. This is not a good matchup. Relentless Flame is just so good. These new decks, they, they don't compare. You know, Relentless Flame is from the final... Whoa, where's my mouse going? Relentless Flame is from the final year of Sun and Moon theme decks, so it's really good. And I'm burned. Hopefully I flip out of this. I do, okay. There's energy, that's perfect. So what is my game plan? I think I'm just going to put as much energy as I can onto the Surfetch because they're about to have a Charizard, and that's not good. And... I probably just want to put somebody down who is expendable. So actually, maybe Pseudo Wudo? I don't know. Sure, let, let's just do that. So Powdon. Powdon has 150. Charizard does 130. So if I want them to attach another energy, I can put the Powdon down. But I mean, it's, it's also possible they just don't have a Charizard. They haven't, they haven't played a single card that is burnable, so they haven't played any items. And, oh, and they just... So their start was Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard with enough energy, and, and they're just going for it. So this is insane. Turn after turn, they're just going to recycle their... This is crazy. So I'm guessing they probably had that supporter, and they were just saving it because 
Their starting hand was insanely good. And there's Nest Ball. You're not going to see that in any theme deck going forward. This card rotated out because it's so good. Wasn't reprinted. Same with Timer Ball. Oh man, could you imagine Timer Ball in standard right now? But I mean, I guess we have Evolution Incense, so maybe it's not that great. And... Yeah, the Hippowdon, I want them to Roaring Resolve and then attach. That is my game plan. It is not a good game plan, but that is the game plan. So if, they, if they're a little bit short, like if they have to have a Fire Energy in their hand to take this knockout. If they don't have a Fire Energy, they, can knock out, they cannot knock out Hippowdon. Uh, well, I mean, they can if they have a Professor Kakui, but they're just playing how. Alolan Hop. Okay, so they, they're they short on the knockout, but I don't think they really care because they probably have a Nidoqueen. Queen. Nidoqueen Nidoqueen Queen is just insanely good. Alright, so I'm taking the knockout on this Charizard, but after that I don't really have anything going for me, or maybe I do. Okay, so I'm going to research. I'm going to lose a Surfetch. Never going to see that one again. And... This is not great. It's actually kind of horrible. Okay. And maybe I should have held on to the switch, but what are you going to do, right? Okay, so hopefully they don't have a Rapidash, but if they have an Inner Queen, then they have a Rapidash. Hopefully they don't have an Energy. Oh, and wow, they are... You, know, you remember how I was drawing last game? That's how my opponent is drawing this game, except that... You know, the power level of their deck is much higher than the deck that I'm playing could ever be. You know, the Rapidash... Let's get that Nidorina out of here. Yes, it costs 2 energy, but you're doing 60 damage turn after turn, and you could be safe from damage. Whereas with Dug Trio, yes, it only costs 1 energy, but you're only doing 30 damage. So it takes twice as many attacks to knock something out than Rapidash does. And... wow. So because they have that Nidor Queen up and running... There's not really anything I can do from this point on. Okay, so they flip tails, but unfortunately, I don't have anything I can do right now. There's a turbo patch. It's, yeah, there's just nothing I can do. And I flip tails, so that's fun. I think I... I think I just need to build up a Hippowdon. Nope, okay, well, using Pierce. So you're sort of seeing the theme deck falter for the first time in the video. Like, what what can I do? I don't have any... You know, the Surfetch is not great in a theme deck, especially when you only have two Switch. You know, the Darmanitan theme deck has Air Balloon. I don't know why that one has Air Balloon and this one doesn't, because Meteor Assault is a great attack, but if you can't use it turn after turn easily, what's the point? You know, I don't think anyone in this deck has free retreat, so it's just... It, it's kind of disappointing how disappointing this deck is. You know, it, it's just a couple cards away from being pretty decent. But it, what, what does it remind me of? There's the, the Darchomp and Lucario one. That one has a Hippowdon as well, if I recall. And the Bowdon is pretty much equally useless in that deck. And what do we got? Are they going to flip heads or are they going to flip tails? So, man, things work out a little bit differently. And I'm winning this one. Okay, so I will research. I'd really like to get a Hippowdon. Really like to get a Hippowdon. So I'm going to have to send somebody up there. I guess I'll just send up... Uh, I guess I'll attack with Doug Trio and just hope they flip tails or something. But look at the, the board position they have over there. That is insane. And the fact that they just never flipped heads is, is crazy. Okay, so now it's going to be Doug Trio's turn. There's Stone Journer, that's okay. There's Diglett. Uh, I guess Stone Journer... Okay, flip heads and you're... nope, okay. Well, Dark Trio's going down. 
Dog trio's going down, and I don't really have a response. Uh, 110, so they're doing 110. They're saving their Charizard. Yeah, they're they're just going to put me in a position where I don't have anything I can really do. You know, I mean, look at this. Look at this hand. You know, they have like one card in their hand, and they they're in a better position than I am just because they have Nidal Queen and they have Charizard. You know, I can't wait. You know, I. A year and a half from now, the theme decks in Sword and Shield are going to be insane, and you're going to look back at something like this and be like, why did they ever print this in the first place? This deck is horrible. And I'll make this my last video, or my last match of the video, just because, I mean, look at this. Okay, so... I don't want to send that up there, so I'll, I'll send you up there. And there's BD. I mean... Is there anything I can even do? I mean, I can knock out the Nidor Queen next turn. I guess that's somewhat respectable. You know, there is a chance that I win this. If they... No, because they're going to have another Charizard. They're just going to attach to the Nidor Queen if they have an energy. The odds of me winning this, I'd say are like 5%. Okay, so now my odds of winning are probably about 1%. They attached energy to the Nidor Queen. They got their other Charizard. They only have two prize cards left. All I can do is take a knockout with Sir Fetched and then hopefully take a knockout with Hippopotas or Hippowdon. But that, there's just nothing I can do. I mean, I really don't feel like stalling with Doug Trio, but I think it'd be pretty funny if I flip, you know, 20 heads in a row and just win that way. There's a hop. So I know there's two Hippowdon, so there's a Hippowdon somewhere. I can deal 150 damage, which hilariously is not enough to knock out an inner queen. So I'll have to rely on the triple smash. And so they're just preparing for the end of the game here. They got so many things set up. They have a oh, I'm going to psychic. So they have a powered up Nidor Queen. They have they have everything. There's nothing I can really do. I'll put the Dug Trio in the active. Maybe I'll get a hip out on. Maybe I'll flip heads. Well, need you to need you to need you to be there for me, Dark Trio. Just flip that heads. Nope, and that is game. I'll hopefully they'll just attack and not waste anybody's time. I'm gonna hover over it. Maybe you're completing a challenge. I'll give it. Nope. Okay. Well, they're just gonna have the win. Yeah, the Surfetch deck it does not compare at all to Relentless Flame. Relentless Flame is just so much better. Pretty much every single Sword and Shield theme deck so far has the same problem, and that is that the energy acceleration isn't there, the attackers aren't nearly as good, the synergy with the decks isn't great. It really is pretty much exactly like the start of Sun and Moon, where the, you know the cards haven't reached a point where they're that good, the makers of the theme decks don't want to use cards from a previous generation, so we're sort of just waiting for the cards to reach a point where they're good enough to make a theme deck good enough, but... We're probably a year away from that. You know, the the Sun and Moon theme decks didn't get good until Team Up, and that was the final year. And so that was year three. We're still in year one of Sword and Shield. So it might be a little bit rough in the theme arena there. So if you're looking to buy a theme deck, I would look to the left of the screen and not the right. So I will end the video here, and my next one will be about Darmanitan. Maybe it'll be slightly better. Who knows? I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.